and we're on. This week, we have Matt and Sam from API Watches with us. Gentlemen, welcome to the Making Time podcast. Thank How are you, you doing? Much. Yeah, thanks for having us, Darren. Thanks it's uh, great to be here. Yeah, yeah. My pleasure, mate. My pleasure. Um, guys, if you could please introduce yourselves to the to the listeners. Um, we, obviously, we have video content here, so if you want to take any turns, and, and at least the guys know know who we're talking to throughout the podcast then as well. Yeah, it's great. I'll go first. Um, I'm Matt Bustazen. I'm the founder and managing director of Apia, if we can, we can call it that. Yeah. Um, and I've got Sam here as well. Sam, Sam White, pleasure, pleasure to meet you. Thanks a lot for having us here Hello, today. Uh, co-founder of Apia. Yeah. And um, yeah, really excited to be here. So thanks. Yeah. Sam does our kind of operation stuff, but it's uh, it's funny. I'm sure it's similar when you when you started the business. Um, we have we have job titles, but mm. you kind of you kind of go and do do everything. We're yeah. going from doing technical drawings one day to making TikToks the next. So it's sure. kind of loose loose titles. Like that. Yeah, absolutely. It, it it requires everything. You have yeah. to have different hats that you put on for different times of the day and and and, and different different situations. But lads, th- thank you very much. Thanks, thanks for making the journey. I know you've come up from down south uh, to spend some time with us. So I'm super excited to. To, to put peel some layers back really of, of Apia and, and 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 give the listener a bit of a an insight into what you guys are doing. It's just how different it is. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna open this up with with the line additive technologies. Yeah. Is that fair to say? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. And and it was a good segue there saying peeling back the layers because um if we give a little bit of context of what additive manufacturing is, yeah. um, it's a layer by layer process, more commonly known as 3D printing. So uh people that are aware of 3D printing, it's normally seen as this technology that you could have uh, on a desktop machine that uses polymers or, or plastics and um it's a layer process. So you have a 2D geometry that the machine creates, moves up slightly in the Z axis, does another 2D layer, and then over hundreds or thousands of layers, you have your object. And mm. normal 3D printing is used for these polymer hobbyist types of material uh, manufacturing processes. Plastics. Plastics, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Additive, um, the reason why we use additive and it's normally used in the industri- in, um, engineering industry is because additive manufacturing is reserved for the more kind of metal 3D printing and more complex polymer processes. So you wanted to have that distinction so that when we say additive and you see a 3D printed watch, you don't think something that you can print in your of in course. your bedroom yeah, yeah, yeah. these are very very expensive machines the technology is normally reserved for formula one aerospace biomedical applications um, and really our brand is looking at how we can explore this technology and bring it onto the watches uh, to the wrists of of watch collectors uh, unreal so you guys are basically 3d printing watches mm. um in a fancy in a fancy in way. In a fancy way. Using lasers. Uh, using yeah. lasers <laughs> and, and some of the best technology on the planet. Now, this isn't something someone can just stumble into. So how, how did you guys, how did you learn about this? How did you meet each other? Where did you grow up? What's the story here? Do you know? Yeah, we'll go We'll go back to the origin story yeah, of, yeah, yeah. of Apia. Um, Sam and I met at school um, on the rugby pitch. Mm. Yeah, was a, was an interesting... Well, yeah. Seven. No, I remember meeting you and thinking, oh, no, I had the position that I wanted to, that I see myself playing and I saw you as a direct... Competition. competition so it was what was this position center but okay. luckily there's inside and outside yeah, so yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. i think i ended up did i go in, inside you moved to fly half didn't you at some point inside the move to fly half, half yeah. i think cause probably because you wanted my position so that that pre-season year seven you've gone yeah. from being the the big the big kids at school yeah. now you go to a new school you're the smallest there but it's just funny those kind yeah. of pre-season trainings how seriously you would take yeah, it yeah yeah i guess yeah, yeah, at yeah, that yeah. point it's a bit it's quite important it's like thing, you're stepping it, out in you know? twickenham yeah, for the first yeah, time yeah, and yeah. um so we met there and, and and that was kind of where our friendship started that kind mm. of you always have your best mate is someone that you have a little bit of competition with. Like you sure, want them to do, sure. you want them to succeed and do everything mm. as good as possible. But there is that little bit of like, of course, you want to, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. some competition there. So we ended up playing rugby for pretty much a whole school career together. Yeah. Um, and we always had very similar interests of what we liked studying, what we yeah. found interesting in the world around us. And that was maths and uh, uh, physics and, and those subjects. Yeah. Um, we then went through to, to year 12 and 13 and wanted to study something in that area. So uh, I did maths further, maths and physics. And it was it's that point where you go to university and you have to decide, what do I actually want to go and do with my career? Okay, you don't have to go to university, but for us, it was like this direction that we wanted to go down and trying to understand which career to go into. Mm. And when you're 18, it's a hard decision to make. Like you don't yeah. know 
yeah, really yeah. what you want to do for the rest of your life. And my dad is an engineer and my granddad was an engineer, but I never was really sold on the idea. I mm. wanted to go into it, maybe do physics or something like that, um, but ended up studying engineering at, at Warwick. And Sam, you kind of had a little bit of a different experience. You mm. wanted to... Yeah. I mean, also, we also ended up in a lot of the same classes together. Yeah. So yeah. interested in math and physics and that that combination kind of lends itself quite well to engineering. Um, but growing up, uh, my dad bought an old car. I think it was like a couple of weeks after I was born or something. It's like a bit of a celebration. And I think his view was that that would be the thing we sort of do together on the weekends. So uh, most of my weekends as a kid was sort of sp spent under an old car with my dad. Yeah. Um, which just got me really interested in engineering. Uh, messing about with old bikes as well. Um, I think you can you can get a 50cc when you're 16. Yeah, of so, course, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I, that was incredible. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. Um, I, I did exactly the same. Exactly yeah. the same. And just my the school freedom. was at the top of a hill. Okay. Uh, a great big hill. And did, you uh, make, did it make it up? Uh, just about. <laughs> just about. And I bet it made a lot of noise oh, as well. Mate, going up as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's people walking their dogs faster than me going up this hill. But but yeah, there's a few people listening to this now who know exactly the hill I'm on about because they had yeah. the, the, the bikes at the same time and we yeah. all did the same stuff. But yeah, no. Um, 50s to 16, mate. How much fun was that? Yeah. Well, that's why the old stuff is so much fun because it makes a lot more noise. Yeah. You know, you're probably not going nearly as quick as a modern car, but it yeah, makes yeah, so yeah, much yeah, noise. Yeah. You just feel like you're going flat out. It's, it's ergonomic. Brilliant. You can feel it. You yeah, can, yeah. You know, you're, you're in it. It's, you mm. become part of it. Now, there's so much technology and thinking computers and stuff in, in yeah. vehicles yeah. That, that it, yeah. it, it mitigates a lot of that yeah. rawness that mm. so many of us love. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, anyway, sorry. Well, probably, well, there's, probably, there. probably, yeah. Yeah, there's probably, that probably transitions over to the um, world of watches a lot. And I know yeah. this has probably been covered so much but the fact that people still go for mechanical watches of course, yeah. over yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'm sure thousands of people have made that point already yeah, but it's yeah, the yeah. same thing with old cars isn't it you know yeah. you're so much closer to the to the engineering and the mechanics behind it 100% so you guys have, have gone off and, and done your uh, university stuff and, yeah. and, and, and and then uh, did you go to uni together was that was so, that or did you peel off and go separate yeah we went to separate unis I went to Warwick and did my masters in mechanical and manufacturing engineering yeah. and Sam went to, to Nottingham to do pure just mechanical just about managed it didn't we yeah, yeah. Long, <laughs> long distance yeah but, it was you know, tough we did it we did it FaceTime exactly exactly the occasion Matt got girlfriends so. yeah. oh, that old chestnut yeah. 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 that guy yeah. on me yeah. huh? um, Oh, yeah. what good he's got there. He knows yeah, he knows. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, so then, yeah, so the first year of uni, I, I enjoyed it and had a passion for it, but yeah, it wasn't yeah. quite sold. Yeah. And it was second year where my dad bought me one of those desktop 3D printers where it changed everything. Okay. Um, and it was that process. It was this small little box that was jankly put together. Um, but just what it meant to be able to take a concept that I had in my head, design it mm. in 3D on the computer and then have it as a physical object next to me in a couple of hours just mm. blew my mind. Mm. Being able to fix things quickly and build things for my engineering course, that's where I really fell in love with the technology. And I'm sure if you go back to my second year uh, uni accommodation, you'll find a lot of badly designed plastic parts all around that, <laughs> around it's, that it's, flat it's, fixing it. It's yeah. changed the design process a lot, hasn't exactly, it? Because yeah. traditionally, I think you would sort of, spend loads of time doing drawings course, before yeah. you even move yeah. to CAD yeah. and there'd be so much that goes into it but now you can sort of you can fail fast can't exactly. you you can go yeah. CAD print and it doesn't it doesn't matter if it doesn't go yeah, yeah your design correct. iteration process is rather than a couple of days or weeks mm. it's a matter of hours and that's really where my passion for engineering properly kind of had the foundations for yeah. it and then as my degree went on, I wanted to focus on understanding this technology as much as possible and how I could design and build things for it. So my master's, my third and fourth year projects were all based on large scale additive, okay. which is building 3D printers that can make parts like the size of this table in a couple of hours. Like how can mm. we make this technology more scalable so that big companies can use it to increase their productivity? Um, and that's where I got more and more into it. And that was still on the polymer side, so plastics. And then when I went into the world of work, I wanted to see which type of companies I could work with. I, mm. I wanted to go into the engineering industry, but I, I liked the technology side more than actual designing and building bridges yeah, yeah, or cars yeah. or whatever. 
so I was fortunate enough to end up getting a job at a, a tech company and uh, that's from San Francisco, but they have uh, UK offices um, and they create the software for engineers to design the world around us. So okay. it's like CAD, CAM, yeah. um, those types of CAD is computer aided design mm -hmm. and CAM is computer aided manufacturing. Um, and with that, working in that industry, I was then able to see this side of metal additive. I hadn't really experienced it, okay. um, but similar to when we were having breakfast uh, this morning, being able to create something out of a metal powder using lasers just blew my mind. It was like mm -hmm. that new epiphany from mm -hmm. the little box that my dad gave me mm -hmm. was this new thing of like, holy shit. Like it's you witchcraft. Can, like, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was working on these projects where we were using additive to create more optimized components. So working on a, uh, a big aero uh, space project where we were redesigning a turbine center frame, wow. which is something that has loads of other parts bolted in. There's okay. manifolds, there's air uh, flow going through it. And we were using additive to make it more thermally efficient and more efficient from a fluid dynamic standpoint. Uh, and it was this big project. Um, and it just really showed the true capabilities of additive manufacturing, making it 34% lighter, uh, more fuel efficient, better thermally, um, more insulation. So that was really my first step into how additive is making the world around us more sustainable and uh, more efficient. And it's mm. really starting to get adopted more in the engineering industry. And yeah. it's not really being done in the consumer, consumer industry as much. So that's kind of where my passion for additive, metal additive became. Um, and where Apier actually started as a, as a brand was I was doing these projects and um, I'd gotten a big promotion at work and yeah. I was into watches, but wasn't really like as passionate as Sam about them. And I wanted to have a milestone to kind of- Well, even then, I mean, there's, for me, I know I was always interested in growing up, but I was unaware of this huge world out there of enthusiasts like it and I didn't realize quite how really into them some people were so yeah, this, yeah, yeah. that's why this has been so great yeah. I mean just deepening our knowledge of the wider yeah. watch community yeah. um, it's, a, it's a slippery slope yeah it? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it is a slippery slope yeah. and there's, there's so much going on in so many places so many different facets so many subgroups within groups and it, it's nuts so yeah. how did how did how did the watch thing really sort of kick off for you guys? Like, yeah. I mean, was there a particular watch? Was there a particular piece that either one of you picked up and you thought, right, okay, this mm. is a bit of crossover. Yeah. yeah. We can do something. Well, the first watch that I was wearing on my wrist was an Apple watch. And I know that it's a bit of a taboo How topic. Dare you. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> like, um, I think it was said previously on the podcast, it's, um, I kind of see it as a gateway drug for, mm. for, for, for watch collecting in some yeah. sense. It's getting something on your wrist. Yeah. Um, started wearing that and you go out for dinner and stuff and you kind of look, and I'm going to show my age here, but you look like you're wearing a Ben 10 watch. That's what my girlfriend always calls it. <laughs> with a big screen. Um, and it doesn't quite like work. If you're going out for a fancy dinner, it looks, yeah, it yeah, looks yeah. funny having, having uh, an Apple watch on. So yeah. I would try and like dress it up with different straps, et cetera, but it never really kind of hit, no. the, hit the spot. So when I had this promotion and I wanted to kind of mark it with a mile, like the, this milestone with something, Sam said, why don't we go and, get a prop, get you a proper watch, get you a, a mechanical watch. So went to an AD and had a look and I did a lot of research of what type of brands I wanted and what thing I was looking for on a watch and ended up with Tudor as a brand. And Solid booth. Yeah. Which well, it's is, fun, it's, and it's funny as well how it was that classic, oh, we're just going to go and scope things yeah. out. We're just going to have a look, you know. It never works that way. <laughs> obviously, no. by the end of the day, you're walking out with the brand you yeah. watch. Yeah, yeah. And I could, I could sort of sense Matt was walking down, the, when we were walking down the road, Matt was sort of saying things to, you know, sort of reassure himself that he's made the right this decision. Is fine. To, yeah, this yeah, is fine. This is, and I was just yeah. like, man, yeah. you, uh, you know, yeah. that was the, big, the right one to yeah, get. Yeah, you yeah, smashed yeah. it, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, and it was a great moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And that just got bit by the bug, right? Yeah. You, that first thing that... <laughs> it's pretty for you. I mean, you're, you, you've got home. Everyone's left or, you're, you know, yeah. you're on your own for the first time. Yeah post buying that watch yeah. first thing you're doing is looking at how is this done how, is this done? how have they yeah. done that well, yeah. I wonder why they oh that makes sense and and you really start dissecting the process around you know reverse engineering it just just in your mind mm. exactly you know mm. just to, trying to appreciate the engineering that's gone involved in it and then all of a sudden a seed's planted exactly mm. yeah. yeah and now I wore that for around six months every day yeah cherished it and it got to the point where I thought 
well, I've got the design background and the engineering background. Why don't I make something for myself, mm. something that I put all my passion in, something that I would want to wear and have something that nobody else would have. Yeah. And I mean, like what, there's only so much that you can do in a, in a watch that differentiates it from, from other watches, but Fundamentally, you have a lot of stainless steel watches out there that look very similar. So I wanted to create something that I would go out for dinner, go into mm. the office. I work in the engineering industry, something where someone would see something on my wrist and well, think, like, what the hell is that? Like that is something completely yeah, yeah, different yeah, yeah. that didn't even knew was possible in the watchmaking industry. So I then took this passion of additive and these projects that I was working on. And whenever we would do these projects, you would create this incredible thing. And when you design or, or make a display piece for this component that you yeah. designed, you would always have these cutouts windows on the piece to show the latticing mm. inside. And latticing is just a, it's a, um, a structure that you can create with additive that makes the part more lightweight and can give it certain mechanical properties. So it's- To, to a newbie, it looks almost like honeycomb. Honeycomb. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. honeycomb. Yeah. There's different versions. So you yeah. can have, and that's why we have different versions on our website that you can pick, but they well, each do a different- And that goes behind the name, doesn't it? Yeah. The the API name. So um, as with loads of, as with lots of engineering, um, the chances are nature's already done it and yeah. done mm. it better yeah, yeah so yeah. um i know with aerospace you know wing design a lot of that comes from actually from from birds and nature mm. um and we we're thinking right well, where is latticing already done in nature and it was it was by bees with with honey with honeycomb like you yeah, say because yeah, 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 it, yeah, it, yeah. it it's a structure that tessellates really well um has an excellent strength to uh weight ratio main mm. maintains its structural integrity and so the um the Latin word for B is apis. Oh, okay. Um, and we thought, maybe maybe not apis. So yeah, yeah, we went yeah, 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 yeah. Matt, Matt thought, well, you know, you have apiary, and so let's go with apia. Yeah, because we're um, housing the honeycomb or the lattices in the watch yeah, case. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where the name came from. And that's why the design, when we started the design process, was how can we celebrate this technology and what it's possible mm. and what it does in the, in the high engineering industry. And that's why our design is all focused on how we can showcase the, added, uh, the, the latticing technology. Of course, inside. yeah. So you, you theoretically then could just make solid, could do yeah, solid sure. cases yeah. with no lattice,ing no yeah. honeycomb, no no yeah. no decorative pieces on it. Um, but you've chosen to go down this path yeah. to show off the <laughs> just, just the majesty really of that technology mm. and what it does yeah. and how it works. Exactly, and it, it, it kind of captures the essence of additive quite well because the with traditional subtractive processes you would sort of start with a block and then you take away what you need to. Whereas things are completely inverted with additive. Mm. You start with nothing yeah. and you only put what you need. So it's sort of coming yeah, at, that, yeah, at that other yeah, angle. Yeah. Um, and if there's, if, if you know, you, if you're putting stuff there, you only need to put what you need. And, yeah. and um, that's why latticing is used because you can, you can get a part that's just as strong, mm. but uses less material lightweight um, exactly yeah and that leans in quite well to sort of the sustainability aspect that that we're that we're quite proud of um it's probably not we're, we're trying not to make the sustainability like a sole selling point we're trying to make it a bit more of, of a given you know yeah, something yeah, that yeah. that you know we should just be doing anyway rather yeah. than the sole differentiator of yeah. our product but nevertheless it is it is still important to what we're doing yeah and additive massively helps with that it does, yeah. Significantly reduces the carbon footprint of a product because your material utilization is way higher. You're not yeah, starting yeah, yeah. with this big block that you're machining down. You can only use as much powder as you need. We add a little bit of material on there because we need to machine it back to the finished course, yeah, quality yeah. that you require on a watch. But yeah, that's that's where the, the brand name came and the, the project or the API was never supposed to be a watch brand, right? Similar to like some of these yeah, other micro brands. Like that, like, yeah, it yeah. was, it, it was, I wanted to make one for myself. Yeah. Um, kind of scrape the money together, get one printed, hand polish it, hand assemble it. And then job's done. I can go on with my life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Never the case. <laughs> climb yeah. the, try and climb the corporate ladder or something like that. But I asked Sam, does he, I'm going to be doing this. Do you want one? Mm. We don't have to get it manufactured by a company somewhere else to do it. I'm going to do it myself. Mm. 
and we started doing the design process. And really, we then got to the point where we actually thought nobody's really doing this in the UK. There are some companies using additive for watch cases, but they're celebrating the manufacturing, pro well, they're using the manufacturing process to do their design. It's a facilitator of what they want to create. It's not a celebration of the engineering behind the technology. Okay, And that's where we see we're different. It's how can we showcase engineering that people wouldn't really be privy to in course, every day. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. We come across a lot of people at watch collectors events and we tell them about the process and they have known the 3D printing, but they don't know the additive manufacturing. You can do stuff out of titanium, ink, mm. canal, all these incredible materials. Yeah. So mm. that's really where the brand is now focused on is how we can celebrate cutting edge technologies yeah. that are doing things in the world around us that normal people might not get to yeah, see. Yeah, of course. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, there's, there's elements to every aspect of professional life where yeah. there's a little bit behind the curtain yeah. that, mm. that not it's not a secret but it's just you don't need to know mm. you know how 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 the lemons are extracted from lemons to make lemonade yeah do you know mm -hmm. what i mean this it's mm. just one of those but th there's some cool technology that 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 facilitates that allows that to happen just happens with watch guys we're all kind of nerdy yeah mm. and and we can really get behind that and so you guys have, have essentially then you've 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 come up with a concept we want to do this yeah you've put some designs together yeah you've agreed yeah, yeah, I'll have one too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, count me in. I'm yeah. in. Yeah. Right. So then you come to the market and you say, right, okay, um, who's gonna make this for us? Uh, yeah. I.e., the you know who's got the big machine, the Gucci mm. machine that's gonna yeah. allow us to do this. Yeah. Where are we gonna get movements? Where are we gonna get yeah. crystals? Where are we gonna get straps? Where are we gonna get you know? Uh, how did you approach that? How does that work? Yeah. So it's not there was maybe a little bit of naivety at the beginning where yep. we thought, well, how hard could this be to try and find suppliers? Yeah. yeah. That needs to be the slogan yeah. for this podcast. <laughs> yeah. How hard can this be? Yeah. Everyone yeah. says, how hard can this be? Yeah. Fucking hard. Yeah. That's how hard yeah. it is. Yeah. Um, and we also made it a little bit more difficult to ourselves because we, if we went to a, a watch manufacturer and yeah. put our near net printed shape or put that on the table, they would think, well, what the hell are we going to do with that? How are yes. we going to even, this is different to, some companies might use additive in some sense for prototyping purposes, but it's mm. very different between taking the 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 process to to create a finished product. There's more steps that you need to do, mm. more processing, more machining, more pan polishing. It's not just print, press print, and it's done. Yeah. Um, so we had to try and figure out how we can work with companies that are in this space that know how to work with this technology that might not necessarily be watchmaking companies mm. or work. And then to add on to that we wanted to celebrate British engineering in some way so that if we were going to manufacture watches and do this as a brand, we wanted to make as much of the components in the UK as possible. So that also, there's no white label manufacturer here. Mm. There's no mm. watch, there's not really a massive watch making industry in the UK anymore. Mm. Um, so how do we do that? How do we set up a supply chain to, to create that? So our supply chain, and we're very transparent about who we work with because we think that that's, something that brands should be doing. It's so that you know exactly if you're buying a product from Apia, these are all the hands that have been Touched working it. on yeah, it. Yeah. 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 And this is yeah. where all the material came from. This is what you're using to create it. There's no black box mm. for it. Mm. Mm. We have some secrets that we do of, in terms of how we and do the processing, et cetera, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. we want to make sure that we are celebrating the heritage of the companies that we work with because we're a new brand. We don't have any brand equity. People don't yeah, know yeah. us. This might be the first time you're hearing about Apia, mm. but we wanted to set up a supply chain that we are proud to talk about and to, and to, to celebrate. Um, and that's why we wanted to keep it in the UK. Um, so we then went through, looked on, Google and did a lot of searching to find these companies that we could work with. Yeah. Um, and our supply chain really started with the additive side, because mm. if we don't get that right, we won't have a watch. Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and the first company that we worked with is called Apex Additive in Ebby Vale in Wales. And uh, Yusuf that runs that company is an incredible, incredibly smart guy. Yeah, He's got incredible chat a lot of experience in the yeah. uh, materials industry and in additive manufacturing. Um, and we started having a conversation with them. They were also um, kind of starting up their operations. They were an offshoot from a big 
additive manufacturing company that are now that build the machines and yeah. then they've set up this job shop to work with so they do a lot of stuff for the tooling industry for the mm. automotive for the aerospace and now they do watch making <laughs> I, i'm from wales and particularly south wales and yeah Ebervale is not the place where you would anticipate an additive, no. additive <laughs> manufacturer well, that, to be it yeah, just isn't yeah. it, it's interesting because you look at it from like the fallout of uh, industry in that area yeah. um uh, that that part of south wales is is historically uh, renowned for uh, coal mining yes colliers yeah, yeah. colliers yeah, yeah. right that's yeah. that's that's the valleys yeah. that that's what happened there mm. um that obviously that industry has has has, has come to an end um, and there's been a gap there for a period of time, but I'm starting to see like engineering businesses start popping yeah. up there. It's almost like it's it's a weird resurgence of resurgence is probably the wrong word, but there's a birth going on of of quite cutting edge technologies that are just so happen to be in and around South Wales, which is well, so, you, you were right to use the word resurgence there in the context of Apex, yeah, um, and that's why and that's why we're so we are trying to showcase as much of the supply chain as possible because mm. there are so many great stories with those suppliers. And actually, um, a, in Ebu Vale, as I understand, I think Yusuf was saying they used to uh, produce a lot of uh, steel, yeah. steel there a while yeah. back. I think it's the old um, oh, Bessemer. I can't remember the exact name yeah, of yeah. The, the the big industrial contraption. But anyway, yeah. made steel there and then that sort of died out. Um, and now in that exact same valley, they're now doing additive manufacturing, which is sort of the modern day yeah. Yeah. equivalent of that steel making. Because that steel making was really at its forefront. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Then, yeah. you know, we the, the British used to make some of the best steel oh, mate, in it, the world. So that's yeah. why it's a really nice. It's South Wales, I mean, we had copper mines there going back and, and you know, we supplied the Roman Empire back yeah, in the yeah, day. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? Swansea was copperopolis. Right. Uh, that's right. what that was revered to. And then obviously we had steel and and, and tin and, and, and all sorts of so, so metals have always played a, a massive part there. But this podcast is sponsored by ZuluAlphaStraps.com. Zulu Alpha Straps make some of the best watch straps in the market, and we do it all here in the UK by hand. As a listener of the Making Time podcast, you can enjoy 15% off on your next order by using the discount code MAKINGTIME15. Your support makes this podcast possible, so please head over to ZuluAlphaStraps.com so we can continue to bring you fresh content. Now, back to the show. Mm. It's just, you know, th this level of technology is is... is alien to a lot of people like they, they mm. just don't just don't know it exists and Ebervale is not the place where you expect no. to find it yeah, yeah <laughs> it's just yeah, not yeah, right. fair enough. Um, I yeah. love Ebervale we used to go there as a child you know what I mean yeah. and, and we go up and we go out for lunch and, and things like that and just wander around the town but I, never in my life did I think there would be uh, a place with such cutting edge uh, cutting edge put my teeth in mm. cutting edge technology uh, yeah. going on there so how did how did you, you obviously found these guys through the work you were doing did, yeah, you yeah. Knew they existed already. Or? Yeah, we kind of. Um, I was aware of them because of where I work, and reached out to Yusuf and and started having a conversation with him, saying that we were going to be doing yeah. this this project. Um, they were really, really accommodating, and I think it's also difficult when you're starting up. You, you don't have loads of money behind you. You're not going to be doing massive orders. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these bigger additive firms would have. They kind of put put us to the back of the pile, whereas Apex really wanted to work with us and help mm. us throughout this process because one, it helps them with their testing and their R and D because this is something this is a completely new application for mm. additive mm. that they haven't done before. Um, the additive normally you print it and it's very good mechanical properties and it's a very accurate manufacturing process, but the surface finish isn't isn't mm. isn't perfect right and you would then post process it by doing some machining on the critical dimensions if you have two things fitting together uh, adding screw threads etc yeah. so you're doing some sort of hybrid process there of additive with subtractive machining we don't want to do away completely with that texture do we because it's 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 a it's yeah. a it's a um it adds a bit of um, flair to the watch yeah. but we just want to make sure that we're it's where we want it to be yeah. we're controlling it yeah. and we've got those clean transitions between polished or as yeah. printed yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and there, there was a, there was quite a bit of complexity in that at first wasn't yeah. there I guess maybe it would be good to show you a, a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely yeah. Um, but so the process it starts with this powder it's a titanium grade 23 powder um, they then have this in a, in a machine 
put that put a layer of that titanium down. Then we have four lasers that then selectively center our two D shapes. Uh, our, our, our kind of the beginning of our watch case like this. It's almost and like then, a slice, isn't it? Like a slice like of a it. Slice the and then they bring over another. I think it's 0 0.06 millimeters of powder. Come up again. They melt that and over couple thousand layers, we ended up with this kind of near net shape. Mm. Um, and the texture, and you can see on our uh, website of how it looks, but it's not perfect. Like it's a little bit rough as a, mm. as a, as a material. Normally that's fine for industry because you might machine the critical dimensions and things and it will bolt together and it's normally under in a piece of machinery or it's uh, yeah, in course, your yeah. in your grandma's hip replacement or something it, it doesn't have to be that perfect grandma, kind of eh? uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's got a titanium hip as rough as Tarzan's feet <laughs> <laughs> grinding everywhere yeah. um, um, but for watchmaking it's different if we were to put if we were to just leave this as if yeah. um, people would be like why, why am I paying so much for something that feels yeah, like yeah, it's yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, a funny texture so we had to really work out how do we machine this and make this to our finished watch so mm. that people would see it as this high quality, something that you'd expect from a watch of this price point. But whilst also keeping the roots in additive, yeah. so still showcasing those bits that come with additive, yeah. but just in a, yeah, in, a, it, in a, you know, refined, it'd be so easy refined to, manner. to hide it, wouldn't it? It would yeah. be so sure. easy to hide it. And, sure. and, and that's the charm of this. Yeah. Mm. That's, that's the character of mm. the piece, I think. Yeah. So yeah, it took a, took a took a while to get to this point, but we're now getting pretty close to being ready to launch. And we didn't want it to go to market with something that wasn't going to be 100%. And yeah, 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 it's yeah. taken a lot of iterations. And the issue with additive, although that it's beneficial from a, uh, a cost, you have that a little bit of prototyping cost that's expensive, and then it kind of flatlines. It's not, if you make 20 of these parts or 500 of these parts, the price doesn't really ma matter that much. But yeah. if you're making one of them, it's really of course, expensive. Yeah, yeah, it's an issue. Um, so but we you hit that economy to scale pretty quicker, quick, don't Pretty you? quick, yeah. 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 Um, so every time we would do a new iteration, we'd have to make a new print. It would be quite an expensive process mm. to get that done. And then you have that lead time of machining it, seeing if it's good, getting feedback from, mm. from Well, that's also why having all the supply, like well, not all, but as many as we can of our supplies in the UK has just been excellent because the whole remote working uh, and doing things via teams is excellent. You know, it's, it's people enjoy a lot of freedom from that. But I do sometimes find that actually when it comes down to some uh, problem solving, there is no substitute to just all being in a room yeah. together, having the, the physical artifact there and just, you know, yeah. going at it until you solve the problem. So that has been massively helpful. Yeah, and we could go from having the design done, uh, Apex would print it the next yeah. day, we would have the cases probably a couple of days after that, because it takes around five, six hours to print them, then they have to be heat treated, taken off the build Not plate. Not per watch though. Not, Not per watch, watch so that's the whole for your, build. your build plate volume. Yeah, so you yeah, just yeah. fill that up. With, yeah. yeah. We then have the machined and then we bomb it down the A3, pick it up, pick up the, uh, the cases. Oh, you, go. you drive to South Wales to grab them? Uh, well, they from South Wales, and then they're they machined. go to a finishing process. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Them up. So yeah. we then have them machined in uh, Petersfield, yeah. and then we take them from Petersfield to get them polished and assembled in Hatton Garden. Wow. So, so but, you're including like the jewelry quarter. Jewelry quarter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, there's so much heritage. There's so much heritage. Yeah, of course. Isn't there? Yeah, 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 yeah. It makes yeah, a bunch of sense. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. So the, the, we started with the additive process of getting that supplier done. We yeah. then needed to look for a company to do the machining. Mm -hmm. Again, not that many CNC companies work with additive processes. So how do we then get that set up for mm -hmm. them to, to work with it? Luckily, uh, Apex do work with another company to do a lot of their CNC yeah. machining. Yeah. So yeah. we work with them. They mainly focus on like satellite manufacturing um, contract work. Wow. And so it's it's, <laughs> it, it's it's trying to be a little bit flexible because we don't have a massive watchmaking industry in the UK. Of course. But yeah, yeah, yeah. The, fundamentally, it's a mechanical part that needs to be put together at tight mm. tolerances. So why not use the aerospace industry to I, do that? I've done the same for years. Yeah. Yeah, it makes a bunch of sense. Yeah. Um, mm. it, it just makes complete and utter sense to, to use it. They have the equipment, the, the, the knowledge. Mm. They're working through their microns. Exactly. It's one of the few industries in Britain, really, that, that have that knowledge, skill set, and, and repertoire of, of, of technology to be able to accommodate watchmaking or, or similar things. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it makes, makes complete sense. May, may I ask, before we progress any further on on the CNC inside of stuff, why, why is it fundamental to go down that route rather than tumbling, for example, or blasting? It's just 
you need to have those fine crisp lines when mm. you're making a watch right yeah mm. i think there's that's how we saw it being distinguished when you're looking at a watch at a certain price point having those crisp edges mm. uh, and design details that maintain if you put it in a tumbler mm. you're going to have soft round corners over everything mm. and then also the the side of our cases will be the same texture as the lattice on the inside of course yeah. whereas having the machining we can go in and machine out our lattice windows but leave the lattice on the inside untouched of course so we yeah. now have yeah. that transition of a brushed or machine texture with a printed texture and that's yes. really what okay. we were trying to yeah. showcase yeah. 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 so there's all these little things and we've had lots of different we're kind of trying to build a bit of an archive now of all these different processes mm. so yeah. that we see what the decision making was to get to the final product now yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that we're happy with so that's that's essentially the case. Yeah, that's the case. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. One, piece that's one, one, yeah, one piece. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That then, to my knowledge, you guys have included some some pretty cool folks making dials for you as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Tell yeah, me that yeah. story. Yeah. 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 So we came across uh, Bedford Dials in um, Tembury Wells. Uh, yeah, Tembury Wells. Yeah. Yeah, Tembury yeah, Wells. Tembury Wells. A bit north, a little bit northwest of Birmingham. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Jonathan that runs that, Jonathan Bedford. An incredible bloke. You know, yeah, when you yeah. uh, talk to these people that this has been their life and their family has owned this business for uh, since the 1800s. Yeah. yeah he yeah. lives and breathes dial manufacturing. Yeah. And um, every time I give him a call to ask him about progress or like come up with an idea, he's very like keen to work with us on making new things. I get talking to him for about an hour just about dials or something that he's been testing. <laughs> I was like, Jonathan, I wanted a five minute conversation, <laughs> yeah. but that's, that's the beauty that's of, want, though, that is what yeah. you want. That is what you want. And it's, uh, it's that's two incredible. That's street, isn't it? Yeah. It's not just, yeah. we send them uh, the requirements or a design and they yeah. just, just fulfill it and then send yeah. it back. Yeah. It's yeah. more, oh, actually, I'm not too sure about this bit. Have you thought yeah. about this? That two way street is so important. It, it's, a, it's an emotional transaction yeah. rather than mm, a, exactly. a, a business one, which, mm. which, yeah, it, it's perfect. That's what you want. Yeah. You bring up the he's, he's going to bring up the best in you and your thought process, and yeah. you're going to bring up the best in him and, and what he's trying to, you know, yeah. what his capabilities are. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. And, and I believe these guys do stuff for the for, for the navy as well. They do some of the the, yeah. the dials for gauges and stuff. So yeah, it's a proper pedigree to this business. Definitely, yeah. they're yeah. they're so ingrained uh, in, in in UK manufacturing. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think their dials are used in all sorts of. Yeah, if you go on the the northern line, yeah, the clocks on the northern line, they did the dials for that. Wow. So yeah, yeah they've yeah, got yeah. great. If you're in that area, they're really worth reaching out and, yeah. and having a conversation with them because they do some incredible work. And well, they, I mean, obviously they were welcoming to you guys, but yeah. were, they, were there barriers to entry? Right, yeah, you want to deal with us, you've got to come in and order fifty thousand units, or no, it was no, just no, what no. you need, lads. Let's yeah. have a conversation. Yeah, yeah exactly, perfect. and that's what we needed because we wanted to have our watches customizable to mm. the to the consumer so yeah. you can have that similar experience where i started this of wanted to create something for me personally yeah i wanted to give the people that buy our watches that flexibility as well say yeah. more on that mate so, so customizable as a customer i think it's just consumers now going yeah <laughs> so going similar on, yeah. to yeah. you can customize the case you can have different lattice options you can have different bezel options different dial colors numerals gear shades wow. straps so there's probably around two to three thousand different possible configurations that you can do in the watch it was just a little fun. bit overwhelming but i think there's we put a lot of work into the configurator in, yeah, haven't we? In, in to try 3D, and, yeah. to try and not overload the consumer yeah. with yeah. with that choice yeah um so providing that sort of one of one piece unique mm. experience isn't it but without um thinking oh it's, you yeah. know too many options and that's why having a supplier like bedford is perfect for it because we don't have to order 500 of each mm. dial mm. if you have 50 different dial options yeah total yeah it gets very expensive to of stock yeah. so if we can then just make them on demand and have yeah. them bespoke made you know that you're getting something that nobody else will have cool. and when we launch we're only going to do not because we want to limit it for a reason. We're only going to do around 160 watches. And that's because we know that we can put as much control and effort into of making course. those yeah. 160 yeah. watches yeah. as good as possible. Yeah. Uh, and also it kind of ties into the additive process of there's four lasers on the machine. Mm. If we add an extra row of parts onto it, it actually increases our cost per case. So we wanted to do them in batches of 20 because um, then it's four, uh, um, yeah, batches of 20 and then... Uh, we do eight batches of of watch cases. So that kind of restricts our manufacturing. Mm. Um, but when we do the configuration, 
we also want it to be that when you configure a watch, if there's only, if you configure uh, the watch that I'm wearing now and there's only three people that have done that configuration in this 160 watches, your watch will be a one of three watch and we mm. won't make that watch again. Wow. We can make some changes to it. We'll do mm. new lattices in the future when we make new releases, but mm. we won't ever make the Inveneer version one with that configuration ever again. So yeah. it will be something that you have it's that special. nobody else yeah. has. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, And that's why we wanted to do it. So we had this experience, we had the opportunity because we can make the watches and design it for ourselves, mm. but why can we not give that to a watch collector we, as well? We need a lattice with the ZA anchors. Yeah. That's what hey. we need. Send us your uh, send us your design we can yeah. have it made. Yeah. That'd, be, that'd be phenomenal, wouldn't it? But then the benefit of that is because of additive, we could have a build plate of 20 different lattices and yeah. it doesn't yeah. affect our cost whatsoever. So we can have that customization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we want to get to the point where we can have the consumer have an impact in that customization as well of like changing the lattice designs, pulling little buttons, pressing little things and it changing the watch completely for them. This is just phenomenal. the beginning and that's why the Inveneer is called the Inveneer. It's, we've gone down that Latin route of naming. So yeah. it means mm. discover in Latin yeah. and that's because we want this to be the first watch that people discover additive in, yeah. in, in watchmaking. And at first we were thinking, we're thinking, oh no, we are we perhaps giving too much choice here? Are, are the customers going to have sort of you know design? Uh, what's the word? Design paralysis, paralysis when yeah. they're uh, when they're when they're configuring. Uh, and also, there's that sort of fine line between offering options, but then also having all of those having still the essence of what your design is preserved across all those options. Mm. Uh, and we we're sort of thinking about it, but then we're thinking, you know there are overlaps between the automotive industry and watchmaking and actually in the automotive industry, providing different options yeah. to the customer is, is very much the done thing. Uh, and I don't know about you, but we spend, we probably spent hours on, on um, the Porsche Washington configurator. configurator. Yeah. <laughs> as like a 12 year old. That's guilty pleasure. For <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'll have a six grand yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, racing I'm sat in the garden package, and my wife thinks like, in. who's he talking to out there? I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. just building. Exactly. That's what we do. Yeah, and that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what we wanted to offer the same thing. And yeah. it's for, for a watch. Of course, and when you feel like you're somewhat involved in the design process a little bit, it just just gets so much more attached to, yeah. to, to the piece. To, and you have a story behind yeah. why yeah. you chose certain things and the, the colorings that we use have some meaning personally mm. to us. So um, the yellows that we have on the Made in the UK on our dials is a yellow derived from the car that Sam was talking about that his dad got that he worked on as he it's was the growing rev up. Cat. It's the little red line on, what, on, what, on what the What car was it? Thing. It's a really old 911. Um, wow. And he sort of, he bought it, was it probably, so it'd be 26 years ago yeah, yeah, now. Yeah, 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 completely yeah. like rusted out. Um, just rebuilt. And yeah. just, yeah, we just Amazing. slowly, uh, yeah, yeah, we didn't do a lot of the bodywork stuff. We didn't quite yeah. have the uh, capability or expertise, but um, a lot of the engine stuff. Yeah. Uh, we did. And then I was really fortunate in that I could work in a garage in the summers. Yeah. Uh, one of his friends had an old old Porsche garage. Yeah. Um, so sort of, I think I probably started when I was probably not 14, but young, 15, 16. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and having the opportunity to work on some of those cars was just oh, phenomenal. absolutely yeah, 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 incredible. Yeah. 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 I think I took apart the engine on one of the, um, the really distinctive 73 Carrera RSs. So the little ducktail spoiler. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was just like, yeah, big Kim County shop. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm a big fan of the P cars. And, uh, yeah. 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 As a lot of the guys listening are, there's, there's a, uh, again, it's, it's, it's an emotional investment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Something, something, that, particularly the older ones. Yeah. They're alive. Yeah. They're living, yeah. they're living yeah. things. They have a soul. They, 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 yeah, that's that's a separate podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. From ter different territory there, but I hundred percent like feel you on that. Like, mm. I'm bringing that yellow over from the rev counter. Yeah, oh, mm. yeah. yeah. chef's yeah. kiss, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. yeah, tell me about the other colours. Well, what else is so we then? This? So the the yellow is actually for the for the numerals. The rev counter is our engineering orange. Yeah, so it's like ah, a kind of like okay. an orangey yeah, yeah, red yeah. colour. Yeah, um, we then have uh, an onyx grey, which is kind of like a a slightly lighter black type of color, yeah. um, matte black or like normal black because you need to have a black black option. Mm. Um, that kind of royal blue, navy blue, um, and then a British racing green, the three, uh, the five that we wanted to go for. Have it, different options people mm. can, and we're kind of tracking what people are configuring and it is like wildly different. There yeah. are some, there are only been maybe like six 
combinations that have been repeated. So there's mm. people, it's interesting. You think that people always just go for the same type of yeah. watches, but people have their own styles and, mm. and what they like. 100%. And it was validating. We were kind of worried that we were going to launch the configurator and then everyone was just going to be making the five exact same watches, right no. but if, it's wildly different, which yeah. is great for us because yeah. these people will then have a watch that if they do it's end very, up buying one, that will be completely unique to them. 100%. It's very, very similar to the Land Rover Crowd. Yeah. Uh, if you if you go on Google or anyone point or Instagram or wherever, and you type in Defender, yeah. you will find ten million variations of the same car where people right. just add a little sprinkle of this, and we'll change mm. the, the stitch pattern on that particular yeah. piece of yeah. the seat, and we'll do this. It, people are so unique, yeah. Yeah. and what they want, and you know how 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 they approach stuff is so so radically different. That I think where you mentioned earlier, mate, about the, uh, the choice paralysis, or, mm. you know. Mm. Right? I think it's probably opposite. It's, yeah. it's so so much excitement with that. I mean, even that aspect on the website, just building a technology that's going to allow you to configure these pieces mm. and these parts. That that's an engineering marvel on itself. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That's not an easy thing to achieve. That on on you know on a website, but yeah, I'm I, I'm in awe. I love I love what you're doing. I love what you're doing. Thanks. It's so exciting. <laughs> it's so exciting. So. Right, okay. So I'm thinking about this now as a puzzle, and we're putting it together. Yeah. So we've got the case. Right? Yeah. We've got the dials. Yes. Yeah. Right. Hands, crown, crystal. Yes. Take me through that. Yeah. So the the crystal is uh, a stern quartz yeah. sapphire crystal with yeah. um, an AR on the the back side of it. Fantastic. Just the back side. Yeah. Just Perfect. the back side. Yeah. Keep it on the back side. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing worse than having on top sides and you scuff them. So that we wanted to make sure that we have the, the best crystals possible. Yeah. Stern quartz is the one, the one to go for. Yeah. German. Yeah. German. Yeah. 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 German yeah. manufactured. Uh, and then the hands French. Um, French hands with a um, super luminova yellow nice. loom on there that we also have on the minute track of the of the dial. Amazing. And then the crowns, um, the crowns we have engraved in London. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. With our with our signet, and then it's a screw down crown. Amazing. Mm. Yeah. Screw down. So what's the death rate on? Uh, we we track it to 100, 100 meters, uh, which is yeah good enough, right? Not most people. Yeah. 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 I say most every human. Like, yeah. Like, like, mm. like, if you go and blow a hundred meters, you're in a submarine. Yeah, you know what I mean? sure. And sure. we can test it for further, for more, but we're happy to say ten bar on the back of the watch, and yeah, that's yeah, what we'll, yeah. we'll stick with. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's that's that, it's so much fun. So, yeah. you guys have have back to the beginning, and let's do full circle. So we've gone through the process. We found all these different people making different yeah. things. We get the first one made. Yes, like that piece comes together. How? What was that day? Talk to me about that. Like, bloody, do you do, like, bloody scary. Yeah, um, and it was it was a good. We had had two watches made. We had it assembled. Things don't always go to plan, right? Yeah, like, do. there's the 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 Swiss in the the watchmaking industry. They don't really. They keep their cards close mm. to their chest. So just mm. even knowing is, like what the tolerances are required for the gasket fits to make sure that this is going to be waterproof. You there isn't like a yeah. You kind of yeah. you kind of yeah. think okay. We'll test this, and then luckily Sam was like, "Okay, no, I'm going to go back to my engineering roots." Gets out his uh, mechanical go textbook, go yeah, to the standards, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's true. And there's a lot of you know, getting things waterproof is is there's loads of codes and standards on it. You know, it it goes back to a lot of fundamental engineering principles. But uh, obviously, with with watches, you're working at a completely different. Um, level in terms of dimensions everything's of a lot smaller yeah. so there are yeah. various uh tables and stuff out there that will help you yeah um but they're at, at larger dimensions so there was yeah there was a little bit of thing in the air guesswork uh, extrapolation to get things right but yeah. but yeah we, we got there we got and, there and i suppose that that changes depending on which movement you have and what you choose and just yeah I, yeah i mean we're blessing that salita and uh Le Jupiter, Le Jupiter, are interchangeable interchangeable yeah, yeah. movements in, in, in so we were originally going to go for a Salita S200 yeah. um, with the kind of rhodium plating and all the frills on that yeah. we then kind of saw Le Jupiter being used more and we liked the longer power reserve we started communicating with them and they're a great company to, yeah, to, yeah. to communicate with yeah. they're really yeah. really easy to work with mm. and yeah we just made the switch because we liked the look of the movement better it, I think it added more value to the to the watch for the consumer yeah and it was something a little bit different and that's a great name isn't it yeah it's a good name yeah. 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 It's fantastic. It. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's fantastic yeah it be fair. Uh, and really the inside of a watch is 
is a cylinder, right? And you need to, you can, with additive, we can make adapter plates and uh, retaining yeah. rings very easily. So yeah. Yeah. we could, yeah, the switch was pretty easy to, yeah. to do that. Um, so that first one came out, who had it? Or, or we both had it. We didn't want to yeah. fall out of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got two, Would have man. been a short story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do they still exist, those pieces? Have you still they do, got them? yeah, we yeah. have them, yeah. Are they yeah. framed up or, or? No, no, we're, we're, we're trying be to. Nice in the future, yeah, it would be, yeah. would be good to yeah. have them. You need to dip them in, uh, or have someone make a, like a resin coffee table. Yeah, uh, that's, yeah. that's yeah. a good and idea. That, that yeah. goes in the head office in the waiting room. Everyone yeah. comes in, they get to see it. <laughs> and, and, with, you think you're doing that with some of the older dials that we're. We do, we have some. some of the earlier yeah. dials, yeah. yeah. Save or, everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Nice well, we have the, the the that was the original one that was like titanium printed with a supply chain. I have yeah. a first one that I did. I uh, we have some additive machines at work. Yeah. Um, I had one printed in steel. I then hand polished it, put in a off the shelf dial. Mm-hmm. Thing looks like shit, but it proved the concept <laughs> yeah, of like sure. this was. I'm not a yeah. watchmaker or a polisher, yeah. but I could get the kind of to prove that this thing's going to work and this of is going to be something different yeah. and that the yeah. design... Um, it makes good paper. Well, actually, no, not very good paperweight because it's so bloody light. But, yeah, well... <laughs> but, yeah, I was going to say, we can, we, we not a very heavy paperweight, but... Well, that, 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 titanium, that's, yeah, that's what yeah, you're yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, but yeah. We, we were chatting over breakfast and, and you have to make your shit to make it good. Yeah, that's yeah, just, just, yeah. just part and yeah. parcel of the iteration process of going mm. through, you know, when you're designing stuff yeah. and when you come up with new ideas, you, you have to learn. It's, it's, mm. it's that simple. Yeah. Um, I mean, even, even if... If you're a master of your craft, I mean, mm-hmm. look at some of the best paintings on the planet. I guarantee the artists, that's probably the third, fourth, fifth attempt or some yeah. of them. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? The uh, dog's barked or whatever, and you, you've, you've, you know, missed a stroke on something. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, Mona Lisa could be in the fifth attempt for all we know. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just part and parcel of the process. Sure. So you guys have gone through that. You've got everything nailed down now. The first two pieces are in. Naturally, you probably hate your early work. Same as everyone does, same as we all do. But it's a learning process. Yeah. So, yeah. so what was the standout factor that you thought, well, okay, right, this is it, this is real. Let's go again, but I want to change this. Yeah. What was the, the most obvious thing for that? It was always the the transition between the machine surface and yeah. the printed texture yeah. on the inside of the lattice. It was okay. always a thing where we were showing it to people. It was something that they love the idea, love the concept, but it just wasn't refined enough mm. to be something that could be on the shelf for someone that would buy it. Or so we like wouldn't be happy with. Yeah. Bit of that execution. Yeah. So we went And through. that's what watchmaking is. It's yeah. all about those subtleties, isn't it? Of course. Yeah. It's all yeah. about yeah. the details. It's that first 95% is the easiest and then that last yeah. five takes yes. yeah. majority yeah. of the time. So we had the kind of those watches, when was it, last May? May last yeah. year, we had yeah, that yeah. first one. Was it just in time for... Was it Clerkenwell Design Week? Clerkenwell Design Week. We had them that ready. Yeah, so yeah, we yeah. kind of we went around. Him to, we wore them to that show. That was excellent. Yeah, there were yeah. some talks from um, Studio Underdog there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Fears yeah. and Schofield, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. And that was an excellent day. So that was a yeah. really good... We got the watch done that morning and mm. took it to a collector's event to really? get feedback straight away. And that was the biggest thing was... They love the concept, love the idea, and the fact that it was majority made in the UK. Well, yep. pretty much everything apart from the crystal or the movement. Um, so yeah, that's probably the first big yeah. milestone, actually. You know, having our first like own, yeah. own well, yeah, know, watches just yet prototypes. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And then that same day, hearing from Feedback, some of the yeah. people in the industry that are you know smashing it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a big day. So then we went through a lot of processes to see how can we optimize that transition of machined and printed finish. And it's it's difficult because if you start taking away material, then the roughness of the print starts interfering with it. So we had to come up with a way of hiding that transition mm. so that you can actually see it as on and this most recent version, you can see that it is a brushed finish with then the lattice yeah. underneath it, behind it. And there's no weird kind of transition point. Of and that was difficult and it's very small machine tools that can go through and do mm. that. I think it's 0.5 mil of a, mm. of a diameter drill bit or yeah, yeah. A milling bit that can go and do that. And when you're working with titanium, that's a really slow machining process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's also why the additive is so good because if we were starting from a solid billet, mm. due to how hard titanium, well, it's not super hard compared to some things, but you know, it's, it's trickier to machine. Yeah. Um, 
compared to say steel. Uh, if you're starting with loads of material that you've got to take away, that's a lot of wear on the tool. Mm, yeah. It's a lot more time. Whereas um, the fact that we can print to a near net shape, of course, yeah, means yeah, that yeah. we don't have to take away nearly as much material. So you're probably printing, and so probably like. 98 percent is 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 pretty bob on and yeah just yeah. reducing yeah. just a, yeah. a finite amount yeah to... yeah yeah so in these cases it's half a mil that we add on okay of material yeah, yeah. On, on most surfaces and then that gets machined away i mean just um, to put that in perspective like that's like a human hair yeah you know? no, it's yeah. funny how big a mill seems yeah. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah it does yeah. Yeah. of course yeah and especially with on cad you get the cad eyes you don't get cad eyes you know, yeah. things yeah. Start yeah. Looking yeah. you work you get a watch and you think it's like this big and you get it and you're like okay well i can't even tell where that change has happened no absolutely not and and again, but this is this is the the pursuit of perfection. That, yeah, uh, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. We all get you know drawn into it's it's part and parcel of it. That's what makes yeah. it such a romantic thing to be involved in as well. Sure, Do you know what I mean. And, and we've kind of parachuted into this, right? Mm. Like we don't have, we we don't we're not working with a white label or case manufacturer or like white label manufacturer that have this years and years of experience of mm. doing it. Mm. So they know, okay, you have a gasket this size, a glass this size, yeah. simple like. We just, we've, we've got 50, 100 other cases that do this exact same thing. We're starting from two engineers that are trying to figure out how to how make do watch. Do how do we yeah. do this? Yeah. But we see that as a benefit because now going to market with the next product, yeah. we yeah. have that expertise and definitely. understanding to bring something out way quicker. So Absolutely. we see that we wanted to bring something to market quicker than, than this because we had the designs and the, con and the prototypes uh, well, almost a year ago yeah, now. Yeah. Um, but it's just making sure that we're really happy with the product that we bring to market. Um, you, you can only launch your first product once. Of course. Um, yeah, absolutely. And it's fundamental how you bring that to market yeah. and, and, and you do it right and it, it sets up your brand, your brand identity and, and what you're trying to achieve. You, you know, you, you, you're, you're laying the foundations there for yeah. stuff that's going to happen in 10, 15, 20 years. Yeah. That's why it's key. Um, for you guys, so, so last year you had that theoretical prototype and you're looking to come to market this year. So that period of time there you've gone through a number of iterations yeah, yeah. And, and, and reined it in quite yeah. a bit and, and and figured out you know problem solved essentially over that period of time so so when you're looking to launch with we don't have a confirmed date yet yeah, but yeah. we're looking at mid-june is mid -June. when we'll have the watches available to order 24 yeah 24 yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah, in a couple yeah. Of months yeah, yeah um and then there'll be a period that we take orders mm. um with the if we sell out we sell out and then uh we'll have them bespoke made to order yeah so there'll be a, a waiting time but yeah. people are okay to wait especially if this is going to be a watch that you only you have yeah um, and you're not going to be sort of stonewalled either yeah. you know yeah, it yeah. comes when it comes you know we're going to make a real effort to involve the customer as much as possible in, in the that process. manufacturing yeah. process yeah, 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 um yeah. we can you know track where each and every watch is throughout those various manufacturing steps mm. um and and give the customer regular updates it's um, gonna be fun so so much fun to watch that process you yeah know what i mean yeah, for customers so. to have that document it'd be phenomenal absolutely yeah, yeah, phenomenal. yeah yeah um, so you, you you're looking at launching this summer yeah and when would you anticipate deliveries to start yeah, we don't want to I'm promise not trying to anything. Promise but, anything. Um, but yeah. Are we looking at a ninety day window? Is it? It's know, probably going to be long. longer than that. Yeah. We, we'd okay. want to have them delivered yeah. for Christmas. Would be okay. would be the idea. But yeah. it depends on 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 some because we have to wait for the movements and the crystals of to course. come. But yeah. the things that we make in the UK, we have more of a um, ownership. Over. But yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, and a kind of that year period, you you make a watch, right? But there's all these other peripheral stuff that need to come with the watch. We yeah. need to straps. We need to do packaging. We need to um, source materials. So we went through a process of doing a watch box, mm. like a wooden uh, British sourced wood made by um, someone in Yorkshire. And uh, we scrapped it because, I mean all the watches that I have, the watch box sit, sit in my cupboard and they're kind of, they don't bring as much value. They're great yeah. in a, in a presentation, yeah. but it's kind of a waste and it's unnecessary in some sense. It's, it's interesting you say that, right? Cause to me, I've, I've only, I only see, ever seen my watch boxes twice. Yeah. So they mm. buy them and the day I sell them. Yeah. Um, mm. And they just get stowed away. Um, yeah. I keep them because I understand there's a value associated yeah. to them. Um, but I don't care for them. There's so many people out there that do care for them. Um, and it's, it's just interesting to see someone who is the same, island, same side of the island as me. Like mm. I, I really, it's negligible if yeah. that makes any sense. You want to, you want to be able to keep, keep using it, especially when you go, yeah. um, I don't know 
about other people. But when I, if I go abroad, I sort of like to take maybe one or two, yeah, two watches with yeah. me. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, sort yeah, of makes yeah. it that bit more exciting. You're on of holiday, course, you're going to yeah. treat yourself. Yeah. It's like, this day I'm going to wear this yeah, watch. Yeah, of course. And, yeah, yeah, no, and I get we that. thought that um, supplying the watches in a case that could be used then as a travel case it's perfect. was a sort of excellent idea because yeah. then then they can use it when they're going abroad or... Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then we also wanted to make sure that you have that lo like a, a luxury unboxing experience with mm, that. So we worked with uh, Tanner Bates and Devon that make our travel cases yeah. um, to come up with a design that can display the watch in a certain way, but yeah. protect it whilst it's being moved around and in your yeah. suitcase, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. And when we were coming up with that, again, we wanted to keep as much in the UK. So when we were sourcing our leather, we wanted to have as much provenance of that leather as possible. Yeah, so yeah, know exactly yeah. where yeah. that watch cow, that kind of, of area, that yeah. leather's coming yeah. from, who is processing that leather and then how we're making it. So we then um, sourced leather from... Uh, uh, J and F J Baker mm. that that you know of in yeah. Devon, uh, their oak tanned leather, um, oak bark tanned yeah, yeah. Um, leather. The leather is sourced from the meat industry yeah, in yeah. there, so it's kind of like an off product of yeah. that industry. Um, Such and a it, cool tannery, yeah. Really like, cool. That's, yeah, that's been a tannery since the Roman times. Yeah, you know, it's phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. With their with their water wheel running through the. Well, it's incredible through, that that tech that technology is still so effective. Yeah. Today, I guess they probably had optimizations, and yeah, yeah, but yeah, fundamentally, so, are they, yeah. are they doing largely the same process as the process. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And, and to my knowledge, the same family has been running that place for a long, long time. Yeah, yeah, a long, long time. Yeah. Um, but again, it, you're coming at it, British, British leather. Yeah, British manufacturing, British. It, it's it's very wholesome. Yeah, yeah. It, makes, it makes my soul happy. Yeah, that's that's good. Good. It's good. and it and it feeds into that sustainability aspect Definitely. as well. You know, if yeah. you're not shipping things across across the world, then it, yeah. you know, it massively yeah, yeah. helps you um, reduce that carbon footprint right at right at the start yeah. rather than... Of course. And we could have gone through a vegan leather route or something yeah. that was... Uh, but it doesn't, it, I don't know, it doesn't have the smell. It doesn't It doesn't give it's you the... the, the yeah, it's not the it same. about smelling leather? I mean, that's the first thing. Yeah. When we got those cases, the first thing I did was go... Yeah. Everyone does it. What are you yeah. doing, Sam? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone does it. it. It's an odd thing. And, it's and, funny. and I think I think there's certain things in us as humans that are possibly genetic memory. Yeah. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, and yeah. I think there's certain yeah. uh, like yeah. I love the smell of a fire. Yeah. 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 As odd as that well, is. Well, you can just stare at it. Was it caveman's TV? Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Well, that's that's through probably millions of years yeah. of, of our ancestors doing the same thing. And that's made them really happy because they get to stay warm and stay alive. Yeah, yeah. Because we live in a mushroom in the middle of the North Sea. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so it means a lot for us. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? But okay, so I'm excited for this journey. I'm excited to, to watch how this as progresses. You guys have some epic content already out where people can go and yeah. get a bit of a glimpse of this and, yeah. and yeah. see how yeah. it's rolling out. Um, I can't wait for stuff to happen. Where where can people find you guys? Where where do they go to to learn more to see this? You have your own website. You, you obviously mm. are on social media. Yeah, yeah. We have uh, apia.co.uk is our website. Yeah. Um, and you can when we launch, or you can go and configure your watch already, save it. Um, that lets us know <laughs> what people are looking for. Yeah. Um, and then when we launch, you can purchase it there. Uh, and then our Instagram is apia UK. Perfect. Um, and there's lots of bits on the website. Um, so if you want to learn more about Additive, yeah. there's a good page there. And um, we've got some videos that we shot um, down in Ebby Vale. Uh, so you can watch those. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of, yeah, some some content to get your teeth stuck into. And um, there'll be some more coming, definitely. Yeah. We have a manufacturing map as well of the UK yeah, yeah, so that yeah, you can yeah. see exactly who we're working with. Yeah, that's amazing. Cool. Yeah, we wanted to, like we said earlier, we... We don't have a heritage as a brand because we're new, but we want to celebrate the heritage of the companies that are help making this possible, right? Yeah. So yeah, you can yeah, yeah, yeah. learn about these brands, why we're working with them. And we, when we went through that supply chain selection process was to make sure that not only are they based in the UK, but they also have a very similar ethos mm. as yeah. us. Yeah, yeah more yeah. partners, aren't they? Yeah, just, they are just more suppliers. partners than suppliers. Yeah. Yeah. That's key, partners. Yeah. Yeah. Partners rather than suppliers. That's yeah. a major difference. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. And, and, it's exciting. I'm so I'm so excited. Like I'm I, I want one. I'm going to build yeah. one. Yeah, um, <laughs> good, I, I'm, good. I'm super excited to see how this progresses and how things happen. And and again, you know, thank you. Thanks for making the effort oh, thanks to come for on. Thanks, 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 thanks for coming in. Is there anything you wanna you wanna you know drop before we uh, before we no, wrap this no, in? Just, you happy? Just thanks for yeah. having us on. You've had some big hitters in the British watchmaking scene. So being able to yeah, be on this platform to, is, to is this, an yeah. honour. Oh, my yeah, pleasure. Thanks. My pleasure. The minute I found out what you guys were doing and how you were doing it, it, it had to happen. So yeah. guys, please check out these guys. Keep keep track of what's going on. Um, and until next time.